Welcome to the Lily online solar course. It is based around this book, the Wind and Solar Electricity book, written by myself and published by Lily. There will be a PDF of this book included with the course registration. There are 10 parts to this and there are invaluable parts of this provided by Norman Phipps who will be doing the build your own panels and Lee Rose who will be dealing with roof mounted solar panels. I've been building turbines and home generation systems for a long time since we moved here in Lincolnshire in the 80s. The main thing then was that a lot of the technology was not available and if it was it was hugely expensive so we used to build our own wind turbines, battery banks etc. Recently let's say within the last decade things have become a lot easier especially on the solar side. Solar panels are now becoming readily available. Ten years ago you had to pay three pounds a watt Nowadays, you would pay £1.50 or £1 a watt. So it means the whole thing is more feasible. The whole system is based around two different philosophies. One being the battery system where you store your own power. So you always have the backup. So if the, if the grid goes down, you still have power. The other side is based upon a grid tie inverter where you have no backup and no batteries. So any power that you generate and you don't use goes into the grid. The government has foreseen this scenario and up until a few years ago they, they had the renewable obligation certificates which was then transformed into the feed in tariff. There's been a lot in the news about the feed-in tariff and it just goes to show that political will can change the systems quite rapidly. So feed-in tariff, if you want to feed your power into the grid and get paid for it, you need to register and you need to have all the parts of the system certificated and fitted by an engineer who's registered with the micro generation certification scheme. This means that you can't use second hand equipment so therefore uh, it's a lot more expensive to go down that route. One way you're buying panels and a grid tie inverter and then you've got the expense of all new equipment and the engineer the other way is you can use second-hand equipment, build your own battery system and have self-reliance. Depends where you live. Now, we on this site, we use wind and solar. The wind makes a significant contribution during the winter, as you imagine. And the solar makes more of a contribution in the summer. On our solar system, the panels track the sun. And if you look in the book under the research section, we did a lot of recording of outputs. And this is all in graph form and the raw data is in the back. But effectively what, it, uh, what we came to the conclusion was that you get 50% more power during the summer months if your panels are tracking which is a significant amount but again it depends upon your site the panels should be if they're fixed facing due south or 10 to 15 degrees either way so here we have a panel one of the components of a system. This is a 12 volt panel, nominal 12 volts. And a bit later on, I do want to explain all the numbers on the back. 
because it can be quite confusing. So this is a polycrystalline panel. There are polycrystalline panels, monocrystalline panels, and amorphous silicon. Monocrystalline are slightly more efficient, but more expensive. They take a lot more energy to produce. So there's a lot more embedded carbon within them. Polycrystalline, again, cheaper to produce, not quite so efficient, but quite efficient. And then amorphous silicon, which is just brown, yes, are not very efficient, and they photodegrade fairly rapidly down to a low level. So you need a lot bigger area. I'll just show you the back. That's the label, and we'll talk about that later on. I've taken the cover off the connector here, and there's a positive and a negative terminal. That's all you need to know, apart from the fact that these, these diodes in here. Diodes are one-way valve. Electricity will flow one way, but not the other way. And these diodes are called bypass diodes. And for instance, if you shade part of the area, like say half of the panel, you could have a situation where the power is trying to push through the other part of the panel. So therefore, the bypass diodes avoid damage. So that's the solar panel. So we have a solar panel or a series of them a series of solar panels going to a battery or to a grid tie inverter. We'll have a look at the inverter later on. Between the battery and the panels we have to have one or two little bits of gubbins. We can have a diode called a blocking diode which means that when the sun has gone down, there is no possibility of any power going from the battery into the panels. It can't back feed. The other thing is, you need to have a charge controller. So, and, and let's just really talk basics here. We have a load of panels, and for instance, a small battery. So. It, on a really sunny day the battery will be fully charged so then you want to stop overcharging because overcharging will damage batteries significantly so effectively either you can switch the panel off you can disconnect it or you can divert some of the power off somewhere else when you switch the panels off there is no electricity going to the batteries. If you have a divert, say for instance to a little heater, then depending upon the size of this heater, and I'm going to call it a load, yes, you can then go, I'm only putting a very small amount into the battery and the majority is going to the dump load. So it diverts the electricity to the dump load. So those are the three parts really. Beyond, if you really want to know what's going on, and I have seen various systems where people have built a system and not put any meters in. So they haven't got a clue what's going on. So you need a few meters. This is an amp meter. And the amp meter, at a visual glance, will tell you what's going on. On this system, when we get to the battery bank, you'll also see that there's a voltmeter, which tells me what the battery volts are. And battery volts are very important. Years ago, all cars used to have a voltmeter on them, which would give you a, a snapshot of the health of the battery and the electrics at any one time. We need the same thing on a battery system, on a solar system. 